good morning as i've told you while reading poetry throughout this year you're going to read the best kind of poetry we begin with pre romantics and later move on to romantic poetry while talking about pre romantic poetry let me tell you this is not a particular cult why pre romantic because actually romanticism came in as a big force but pre romanticism came in as an in between as an attempt to bring about a change and as you know classical poetry was at its best in the 18th century not that that kind of poetry was not enjoyable but still every age uh, needs to find a change and um, poets and authors begin with experimentation and this kind of experimentation was brought about after quite a long time by a few poets a few writers so why do we call it the pre romantic age there's some difference i'd like to underline the difference between classicism and romanticism the age of classicism is followed by a transitional period let me tell you transitional period known as the pre romantic age which comes from 1770 to 1798 about the last 30 years of the 18th century in fact this period in the second half of the 18th century we can observe a new sensibility in poetry and new generation of poets began to arise these poets mostly used subjective autobiographical materials which marked a new trend towards the expression of a lyrical and personal experience of life they were less intellectual and more emotional presenting a variety of emotional states of the soul classicism age ke baad romanticism aaya what is romanticism ye bhi hum isi varsh padhenge parantu usse pehle ye jo pre romantic poets aaye ये क्या परिवर्तन लाए इस पर थोड़ी सी मैं आपको रोशनी डालना चाहती हूँ ये प्री रोमांटिक एज 1770 से 1798 जब एक्चुअल रोमांटिसिज्म आ गया तब तक का है बेसिकली इसमें एक नई तरह की पोइट्री के साथ कुछ एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन किया गया कुछ नई सोच लाई गई और पोइट्री को सब्जेक्टिव बनाया गया सब्जेक्टिव यानी मैं जो चाहूं मुझे जैसा अच्छा लगे वो लाना है अब एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन होगा तो आप जानते हैं पब्लिशिंग प्रॉब्लम्स होती हैं कई दिक्कतें होती हैं लेकिन हमारे ऑथर्स जो हैं कभी एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन करने से भयभीत नहीं होते उन्होंने बहुत सी ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल मेटीरियल लिखा और म्यूजिकल बनाई और अपने पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंसेस शेयर किए और पोइट्री इमोशनल ज्यादा होने लगा ये पोइट्री इतनी खूबसूरत क्यों बनी क्योंकि ये इमोशनल पोइट्री होने लगी सो व्हाट आर द मेन थीम्स ऑफ प्री रोमांटिक लिटरेचर द मेन थीम्स ऑफ प्री रोमांटिक लिटरेचर आर generally a return to nature which is expressed through an interest in the picturesque the wild 
the lonely and the desolate. So, when we talk about nature, there is a beautiful description of nature which begins in the poetry of the pre-romantic poets. As you all know, we will first take up the poem Seasons by Thompson. Seasons itself is an aspect of nature and the four seasons are beautifully described in this entire poem. What you have is just an extract from winter and autumn. Coming to the next characteristic, the cult of sensibility and melancholy generally expressed by the love of ruins, idealization of solitude, meditations on man's unhappy destiny also feature in this kind of poetry. The cult of the primitive life with the difference of civilization and a longing for the last earthly paradise in which man lived in communication with nature is also expressed in this kind of poetry. Though all the poems may not have each of these characteristics, but let me tell you that some of these characteristics will be present in most of these poems. Then there is a love of the strange, the exotic and the sublime. An interest in the middle age which is considered very mysterious and sometimes barbarous too, can also be discern, discerned in this kind of poetry. And the poet shows a distinct interest in Gothic architecture as is typical expression of the medieval spirit. The claim of taste and imagination against reason. See, this kind of poetry began to focus on the fact that imagination must not be subordinated to the intellect. Intellect comes after imagination and all creativity surrounds imagination. So, students, just to brush up in a more simpler way, आप जो देखेंगे प्री रोमांटिक पोएट्री के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स में सर्वप्रथम रिटर्न टू नेचर होगा नेचर को बहुत खूबसूरती से प्रेजेंट किया गया है देर इज कल्ट ऑफ सेंसिबिलिटी एंड मेलिंकली कुछ वीरान जगह कुछ वीरान नियत सुनसान दुखी मन एकाकीपन ये सब बहुत खास कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स हैं इस प्री रोमांटिक पोइट्री में और एक रिटर्न टू प्रिमेटिव लाइफ जो कि हम ज्यादा करीब पाते थे वहां मनुष्य का नेचर के साथ वो स्पिरिट ये लोग लेकर आए जिसे आगे रोमांटिक पोइट्स ने खूब बढ़ाया देन देर इज लव फॉर द स्ट्रेंज फॉर एग्जॉटिक एंड सिब्लाइन हर कुछ विचित्र इवन नेचर में कुछ विचित्र कुछ खास कुछ बड़े उच्च लेवल का पाया जाता है इस काइंड ऑफ पोइट्री में फिर मिडिल एजेस में बहुत खास इंटरेस्ट है क्योंकि वो मिस्टीरियस है और वो कई बार बारबरिस भी हो जाता है तो वो सब सस्पेंस से भरा हुआ ऐसी पोइट्री भी आएगी लेकिन वो धीरे धीरे प्रीकर्सर्स में कम और रोमांटिक पोइट्स में ज्यादा वो कैरेक्टर्स दिखाई देंगे गौतिक एक्सप्रेशन गौतिक आर्किटेक्चर भी एक विशेषता है उसके बारे में भी एक बहुत खूबसूरत लाइंस आएंगे और सबसे विशेष बात है कि ये जो पोइट्री लाई जो परिवर्तन लाई वो ये है कि बुद्धि से ज्यादा क्रिएटिव इमेजिनेशन ऊपर है बुद्धि के ऊपर है तो क्रिएटिव इमेजिनेशन की खूबसूरती हम जो बहुत 
प्लान करके जो क्लासिकल एज में बहुत प्लान करके दोहे आदि रचित किए जाते थे उस सब से हटकर मन में जो आया उसको स्पॉन्टेनियसली दर्शाने का एक बहुत अच्छा तरीका इन पोइट्स ने ढूंढा हु आर द फोर रनर्स ऑफ दिस रोमांटिक पीरियड आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द एग्जांपल ऑफ थॉमसन जेम्स थॉमसन 1700 1748 who is considered the most important nature poet of the early that is of the precursors of romantic age he wrote seasons a seasons kaun se char seasons spring summer autumn winter this is a lengthy poem and it shows nature at its best and he reflected on the character of the primitive man as contrasted to the civilized man seasons is a poem in four books it is dedicated to different seasons of the year as we all know and it shows great interest in nature so this poem is considered to be a kind of a landmark in pre romantic poetry uh seasons as i told you earlier is a very long poem but what is prescribed for you is just a sample from uh, autumn and winter we'll begin with winter and which is a beautiful extract that is uh for you yes then we have what is called the graveyard school of poetry Thomas Gray who wrote uh, elegy written in a country churchyard uh, belongs to this where he describes the sad uh, sadness loneliness melancholy and it is dedicated to common people instead of just the royal or the noble the high class people other poets were young then we have blake and we have william cooper and of course william collins o to evening is a beautiful poem in the next class we can have a detailed analysis of the two extracts of the poem uh, of uh, winter and autumn from seasons yes so to begin with the extract from seasons we first take up the poem winter by thompson i'll just read out the extract and then uh, we will go in for line by line explanation with the fierce rage of winter deep suffused an icy gale of shifting over the pool breeds a breeds of blue film and in its mid career arrests the bickering stream the loosened ice let down the flood and half dissolved by day rustles no more but to the sedgy bank fast grows or gathers round the pointed stone a crystal pavement by the breath of heaven cemented firm till ceased from shore to shore the whole imprisoned river growls below loud rings the frozen earth and hard reflects a double noise while at his evening watch the village dog deters the nightly thief the high fur lows the distant waterfall swells in the breeze and with the hasty tread of the traveler the hollow sounding plain shakes from afar the full ethereal round 
infinite worlds disclosing to the view shines out intensely keen and all one cope of starry glitter glows from pole to pole from pole to pole the rigid influence falls to the still night incessant heavy strong and seizes nature fast it freezes on till morn late rising over the drooping world lifts her pale eye unjoyous then appears the various labors of the silent night prone from the dripping cave the dumb casket whose idle torrents only seem to roar the pendent icicle the frost work fair where transient hues and fancied figures rise white spouted over the hill the frozen brook a living tract cold gleaming on the morn the forest bent beneath the plumy wave and by the frost refine the whiter snow encrusted hard the sounding and sounding to the tread of the early shepherd as he pensive seeks his pining flock or from the mountain top pleased with the slippery surface swift descends yes this is the first reading of the poem and i'm sure you'll have to give it several readings before you start first exercise in comprehension is read read and read again if you read it three times you pick up the first images that come to the mind i have read this extract and what you get a few images that you can recollect from what you read you have the text before you what i have read and the text before you is that it is it depicts winter at its best and remember winter that kind of winter which we are not that much used to where there is frost where there is hail where there is thunderstorm and where there is snow all around and all around so there is this fierce rage of winter it's not that our pleasant kind of winter then it's that fierce rage of winter which is occurring all around which is there all around and it is spread all around right and there's this icy gale there's this harsh wind which is very icy it often shifts over the pool and breeds a blue film anything associated with water uh, has this uh, color blue coming in yes when you're not talking about very transparent very crystal then water and as you can see in all the water bodies there's this a uh, blue hue always coming up right so then there is another image of the loosened ice which is static at one point then when there is some bit of sunshine it starts to loosen it it gets firm but then it loses uh, it doesn't remain static uh, for long then there is an image again of the imprisoned river i'll come to that and there are beautiful images where there is a soul uh, traveler uh, trying to reach back home then who is deterred by the village dog uh, there's a thief and there's a haifa uh, cannot find his mother and there is this kind of winter this kind of uh, images coming around 
and then Thomson throws another kind of image that of the moon and he has given a beautiful different kind of picture of the moon you will have a picture of the moon in the extract uh, from autumn also then here he describes the moon and then the labors of the night the following morning where morning is personified and uh, as a lazy uh, woman who doesn't want to get up and then there is all that happened during the night and all the labors of the night are revealed during the uh, early hours of the next day so let's come into line by line a paraphrase of the poem with the fierce rage of winter deep suffused an icy gale oft shifting over the pool breathes a blue film and in its mid career arises the bickering stream when deep when winter is at its best fierce rage of winter deep diffuse means winter is at its best and there is this icy gale there is this strong wind which is icy it seems to arrest the stream the stream always when it flows will make a sound but when there is an icy gale blowing over it it will make a bickering sound it will make a harsh sound and this action seems to arrest the stream which wants to go further which wants to flow the loosened ice let down the flood and half dissolved by day rustles no more but to the sedgy bank fast grows or gathers round the pointed stone a crystal pavement by the breath of heaven cemented firm what happens the loosened ice due to sunlight some some bit of ice got loosened from the water bodies but then and water started flowing further it was half dissolved by the day but as night ensues there is no rustling any more it cannot move further but then it grows further it grows to the banks it grows to the marshy banks to the sedgy banks and gathers even around the pointed stones and it gathers like a crystal pavement which is cemented firm by the breath of heaven see the imagery see the beauty of the lines the description is a very natural description you can you have access to several videos and all you can easily if you've not really witnessed any sight uh, practically snowfall or uh, this kind of effect of snow on the water bodies you can always search for a video and see how each and every line uh, uh, is an explanation in itself it explains every bit see there is water there is some bit of rustle in the water during the day but it gets cemented and the sedgy marshy banks uh, in the bodies of the stream it can be a river it can be a stream it can be a pond it can be a lake so it is it gets a snow gets cemented on the banks of these water bodies and it this snow sees from shore to shore the whole imprisoned river growls below and see the river the water body appears to be imprisoned and seized from shore to shore it is captured captured by the force of the icy gale and captured because of the snow the place the snow has made for itself it arrests the stream it arrests the water body it arrests the river and the river 
keeps growling. Why this growling sound? Like the words that I use. The river seems, the imprisoned river seems to growl. Why? Because it tries to make a movement. All the layers of the water are not frozen. But due to the sunlight during the day, some bit, the uh, layers, uh, the under layers uh, have melted slightly and they are trying to move forward. But then the under layers cannot move because... It's frozen on the surface. The whole imprisoned river growls below. Loud rings the frozen earth and hard reflects a double noise. So there is a double noise. What kind of a double noise? The noise of the water body which is trying to move ahead and noise of the uh, snow that is encrusting the surface of the water body. While at his evening watch, the village dog deters the nightly thief. Then there is evening and there is a thief who is trying to uh, go around and enter some village. But there is this vigilant village dog who deters this nightly thief. The nightly thief, the intentions of the nightly thief and all are not explained. I am not going to go deep on that. There is another element, the hyper lows. There is a hyper, a chota bachra, jo chut gaya hai, apni maa se, uski bhi awaz aati hai. And the distant waterfall swells in the breeze and you can also hear the sound of a waterfall dur jharne ki awaz kitni khoobsurat aati hai i wish abhi bahut lengthy class karne jaye to hum aapko ye nature ke images pratyaksh um, virtually dikha sakte hain but then you must have been to some of these places if you not you can just imagine the sound of the waterfall in the background. And with the hasty tread of traveller, the hollow sounding plane shakes from afar. And there is a traveller too, who is trying to come back home. And naturally, when there is snowfall, he would be wearing some strong boots. So, if it's silence all around, you can hear a bit of uh, you can hear the sound of his boots and the sound seems to echo all around and you can hear him. The full ethereal round, infinite worlds disclosing to the view, shines out intensely keen and all one cope of starry glitter grows from pole to pole, from pole to pole the rigid influence falls through the still night, incessant, heavy, strong and seizes nature fast. See, it's beautiful. Look at the full ethereal round. What is the full ethereal round? Ethereal, that, is that which is in the sky, which is heavenly and round. What is that round object in the, uh, uh, in the sky or in the heaven? That is the moon. So the full ethereal round, infinite worlds disclosing to the view, discloses infinite worlds to us. It shines out intensely keen. See, there is no uh, snowfall in the night right now. So there is this bright uh, moon up there in the sky which shines out intensely keen and all at one cope of starry glitter. And there is, it's, it's a clear night. So there are stars all around. And this influence glows from pole to pole, north pole to south pole. Everywhere when you look up in the sky, you can see the starry glitter and the moon. From pole to pole, the rigid influence falls 
through the still night, incessant, heavy, strong, and seizes nature fast. This is the description of winter on water, on the sky, and now we'll come to the description of winter on land on the following morning. It freezes on till morn, late rising over the drooping world, lifts her pale eye unjoyous. The poet has personified morning. Do you wish to get up very early in the morning during winters? No. You say no, it's so cold out there, so you want to sleep a bit more. So morning here is personified and says morning doesn't wish to get up, doesn't wish to appear, doesn't wish to come out. But then she has to. So morning, late rising over the drooping world, lifts her pale eye unjoyous. Morning feels very unjoyous uh, to wake up the following morning. Then appears the various labors of the silent night. See, now you can see the various labors of the quiet night. Nothing specially happened during the night because it was starry and the influence of the moon, uh, winter uh, uh, could be discerned in the moon and the uh, stars. Yes. Prone from the dripping cave, the dumb casket whose idle torrents only seem to roar, the pendant icicle, the frost work fair, where transient hues and fancied figures rise. What happens? From the dripping caves and the caskets, the, the currents, the caskets have also been frozen. But then they, this is not a permanent thing. They will start um, uh, melting. The snow will start mel melting. So they come in in different forms and forms of pendant icicles. They come in as drops and of different shapes. The frost works fair and there are transient colors, transient hues, different hues and fancied figures. I often give this example of this fancied figure of um, uh, when you defrost your fridge and the ice melts and you can see those fancy figures when, when you take out lumps of ice. Uh, frozen ice which easily uh, you can take out nowadays you have auto uh, defrost fridges also so it's a kind of transient hues and fancied figures uh, I used to say this is a uh, uh, well for uh, these students a sword uh, shape is, a, uh, is very common okay then white spouted over the hill and the frozen brook a livid tract gold gleaming on the morn. See, look at the hills and the mountains. It's all clean, clear. And the forest is bent beneath the plumy wave. And by the frost refine the whiter snow. The snow is clean, clear. And it's, it's a clear day. It's a second clear day. And the forest is, of course, has borne the burden of all the snow, which is still encrusted. Abhi bhi jama hua hai baraf. And sounding to the tread of the early shepherd, a chota bacha, a shepherd aya hai, as he pensively seeks his pining flock. Wo apni flock apne bichde janwar ko dhoon raha hai. Or from the mountain top, pleased with the slippery surface, swiftly discerns. Ya usse wo slippery surface itni achi lagi, ki wo shigri hi niche utar kar a raha hai. So you got the paraphrase of the poem. In your exams you will have barely 4 to 6 lines for reference to context which you always take up the lines. The first thing you do is that is why you need to know the paraphrase of each and every line that is prescribed in your course. You take up those lines, you begin with the reference you state the context and then you give a short one or two sentence summary and then 
explain the lines <coughs> explain the given lines and then move on to the comments move on to the critical comments critical comments may be 1 2 3 or at the most 5 you don't need to have several critical comments at this stage at the ug level right yes so what are the images that you can draw from the activities of winter in this extract it is a brief extract but the influence of winter the fierce rage of winter is shown on the water bodies on the sky and on the land in the first section which is more laden with the imagery has um, this effect of winter effect of this gale icy gale on winter which does a few things what it tries to shift over the pool it breathes a blue film and the stream gets arrested the stream gets stuck river fas jata hai river band jata hai kyunki hawa ki tezi se wo icy um, jo snowfall hai wo zyada ho jati hai aur kadi kadak bhi ki tarike se bhi usme lag jati hai lekin jo pani hai uske niche ka satah thoda bahut loose hai to wo bhi आगे जाने की कोशिश कर रहा है लेकिन क्या होता है शाम होते होते जब स्नोफॉल का प्रभाव तेज होता है तो ये जो दिन में धूप की रोशनी से थोड़ा बहुत जो स्नो मेल्ट हुआ है वो वही रहेगा वो नहीं हो सकता है वो वैसे ही फंसा रहेगा उसको हम कुछ नहीं उसको ये स्नो जो है वो और ज्यादा तेजी से इनक्रस्ट हो जाता है और साथ ही जो भी वाटर बॉडीज हैं इसके आसपास के पेमेंट्स जो हैं उसमें वो जो जो बैंक्स हैं जो तट हैं जो वाटर बॉडीज के वो वो उसमें भी बहुत तेजी से जम जाता है वो एक क्रिस्टल पेवमेंट की तरह जम जाता है क्रिस्टल क्यों क्योंकि एकदम वाइट वो वाइट होता है और उसकी तरह उससे वो क्रिस्टल पेवमेंट जम जाता है और बहुत तेजी से जम जाता है राइट एंड इम्प्रिजन रिवर ग्राउल्स फ्रॉम बिलो अब वाई इज देयर अ डबल नॉइस देर इज अ डबल नॉइस बिकॉज there is a snowfall which is cementing the sides as well as this loosened ice which is trying to move forward hence there is this double noise then there are some other images there is the image of a nightly thief who is trying to enter the village but then you can hear the uh, barking of the dog then there is this hyper uh, who cannot find smother and then there is the traveler who is trying to come back with hasty steps he is trying to reach home reach the safety of his home and then there is this beautiful description of the moon which is a round ethereal object and it shows infinite worlds why because uh, the if you see the full moon it appears a bit sketchy sketchy sometimes you say there's a rabbit or there are other shapes and sizes now you have several researchers on the moon you can uh, you find uh, they are they are scientists are trying to find prospects of um, uh, existence also in the moon so but then all these natural bodies of the moon uh, mingled together to give that kind of appearance of um, infinite worlds okay and it shines intensely of course if it's a full moon it will shine brightly and intensely and the stars will also appear in the sky from pole to pole you can find the rigid influence throughout the night heavy strong and it seizes nature fast it captures nature fast 
This is the description of this uh, uh, heavy winter um, night on the on the ethereal bodies that is on the sky and now we will get to the description of winter on land. It, it still freezes and morning wakes up late and it's a late morning but then when there is a, the sun has risen so of course there will be some bit of melting of the snow. Generally if it's too hard crusted it will remain, the mo most part of it will remain like that only. But then somewhere sometimes uh, as uh, uh, the snow melts, it melts in different shapes from the caves and the caskets. You can see pendant icicles coming down and this was all the work of frost. There was this icy gale. This was all the work of frost. But then pendant icicles. You wear a pendant. So sometimes mostly it's in form round or oval. So they come down as they melt. And they are mostly of transient hues. Of different hues. Of different colors. And you can also imagine figures. See there is scope for imagination. Even while you read the poem. So there is this. Um, um, beautiful uh, uh, shapes which come down and which uh, fancies figures which come down while the path to the hill and there is this frozen brook also it all becomes a livid tract it becomes a kind of a tract and there is this forest which is also overburdened. There is snowfall all around. The snow is encrusted hard. There is snowfall. But then you can hear the early tread, the sh uh, tread of the early shepherd who has come and who is pensively seeking his pining flock. Uske, uh, uske jo, uh, she, uh, sheep and all rahe gaye te, wo sab so he has come seeking for them. Ya wo nahi bhi hai. Surakshit unhe wo ghar le bhi gaya ho. To mountain top se jaysse bachche ko wo slippery surface dekhte hi fisalne ka shock hota hai. To wo hi slippery surface dekhte huye wo apne ko enjoy kar raha hai. Wo swiftly he descends on the slippery surface and enjoys it. Uh, like anything. So this is a beautiful extract from uh, the poem Winter and, and in, it's a poem in itself because it describes the effect of the fierce rage of winter on the uh, on water, sky and land. ये जो फुल मून का साइट है सितंबर के बाद बहुत ही खूबसूरत होता है तो उसी का कुछ डिस्क्रिप्शन थॉमसन के इस पोएम में आपको मिलेगा इट बिगिंस विद द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द सन द वेस्टर्न सन ही कॉल्स इट द वेस्टर्न सन दिस इज एक्चुअली रेफरिंग टू द सनसेट एज देयर इज सनसेट जैसे जैसे सितंबर हुआ तो सनसेट का टाइम और करीब आ जाता है तो द वेस्टर्न सन विथ ड्रॉज द शॉर्ट द डेज बिगिन टू शॉर्ट अ बिट ड्यूरिंग ऑटम एंड देन दे गेट प्रिटी शॉर्ट ड्यूरिंग विंटर एंड ह्यूमिडिटी इज ऑन द राइज शाम के समय में थोड़ी नमी हो जाती है एंड द ह्यूमिड इवनिंग ग्लाइडिंग ओवर द स्काई इन हर चिल प्रोग्रेस टू द ग्राउंड कंडेंस द वेपर्स थ्रूस और ह्यूमिडिटी जैसे जैसे बढ़ती है आकाश में सब तरफ थोड़ी सी चिली थोड़ी ठंडक भी आती है थोड़ी चिली प्रोग्रेस करती है इट थ्रोज वेपर्स टू द ग्राउंड वाइल क्रीपिंग वॉटर्स ऊस पानी है वो धीरे धीरे बढ़ते हैं वे मार्श स्टैगनेट जो साइड्स में दलदल है वो भी वैसे ही स्थिर हो जाते हैं रिवर्स वाइंड क्लस्टर द रोलिंग फॉक्स and swim along 
द डस्की मैंटल लॉन रिवर्स अपनी राह में और फॉग जो है वो धीरे धीरे जो धुंध ऊपर छाता है इवनिंग में वो डस्की मैंटल डस्की क्यों शाम हो रही है सनसेट हो गया है और मैंटल से सजा हुआ जो लॉन्स है यानी जो ग्रीन सर्फेस है उसके ऊपर फॉग धीरे धीरे पसरता है कि इट स्प्रेड ऑन द डस्की मैंटल लॉन इमीजिएटली द पोएट कम्स टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द मून मीन वाइल द मून फुल लॉब्ड एंड ब्रेकिंग थ्रू द स्कैटर्ड क्लाउड्स शोज हर ब्रॉड विसेज इन द क्रिमज ईस्ट अब ईस्ट में जैसे ही सनसेट हो गया और थोड़ी सी देर बाद क्या नजर आती है मून जो है मून राइज होता है ईस्ट साइड में इट इज फुली ऑप्ड और क्लाउड स्कैटर्ड क्लाउड्स बिखरे बिखरे क्लाउड्स में से धीरे से मून अपना पूरा फॉर्म दिखाते हैं क्रिमज ईस्ट आपने ध्यान से बहुत बार मून राइज होते देखा है तो पहले पहले आकाश का सरफेस थोड़ा क्रिमज दिखता है रेडिश दिखता है फिर जैसे जैसे चंद्रमा ऊपर आए तो वो सही कलर में आता है अब थोड़ी साइंस की बात भी लिखी है पोएट ने टर्न टू द सन डायरेक्ट स्पॉटेड डिस्क वेर मून राइज अम्रेगिस डेल्स डिसेंड एंड केवन डीप एज ऑप्टिक ट्यूब डिक्राइज A smaller Earth gives us its blaze again, void of its flame, and sheds a softer day. A moonlight is so good, so bright, that when the moon comes down from its reddish surface, what happens? We can see it completely. The moon uh, turns to the sun direct. You all know that the moon uh, derives light from the sun. and but you can see her spotted disc इसमे तो spotted disc बोला है जो shapes and forms जो पिछले poem में बोला था वो spotted disc बोला है disc is something round so moons uh, mountains दिखाई देते हैं dales valleys दिखाई देती है and even caverns वो तो सब अपनी imagination है उसमें क्या दिखाई देता है वो सब describe किया है poet ने एज द ऑप्टिक ट्यूब डिक्राइज अब आप ऑप्टिक ट्यूब कब लगाएंगे आप अपनी टेलीस्कोप देखेंगे आप अपनी टेलीस्कोप देखेंगे तो मून कैसे ही दिखाई दे, दिखा देगा एक स्मॉलर अर्थ की तरह द मून अपियरेंस ऑफ द मून विल बी लाइक अ स्मॉलर अर्थ गिव्स अस इज ब्लेज अगेन वाइड ऑफ इट्स फ्लेम मून की अपनी लाइट नहीं है बट इट शेड्स अ सॉफ्टर डे बट धीरे धीरे उसकी चमक फिर भी रहती है दो उसकी अपनी लाइट नहीं है फिर भी द मून हैज द कैपेसिटी टू शेड अ सॉफ्टर डे रात में सूर्य की गर्मी नहीं आती है बट मून की सॉफ्ट लाइट फिर भी पाई जाती है स्पेशली ड्यूरिंग ऑटम सीजन नाउ थ्रू द पासिंग क्लाउड शी सीम्स टू स्टूप नाउ अप द प्योर सरूल इन राइट सिम कभी मून क्लाउड्स में से निकलती है कभी माउंटेन्स में राइज करती दिखाई देती है वाइल द पेल डल्यूज फ्लोट्स एंड स्ट्रीमिंग माइल्ड ओवर द स्काइड माउंटेन्स टू द शेडोई वेल ओवर द शेडोई वेल इट इट अपियर्स एवरीवेयर ओके इट 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 कैन बी सीन एवरीवेयर एंड इट कैन बी Uh, uh, seen over the mountains, over the valleys, over the uh, water bodies, also. The whole air whitens with the boundless tide of silver radiance. Sarv sab or vyapt hai wo silver radiance, jo moon ki jo silvery light hai, wo charu taraf dikhai dikhi hai. The silver radiance is spread all around, and The rocks and floods reflect the quivering gleam. और मून देखो कितनी beautiful imagination है जो पानी में यदि मून ऊपर से मून लाइट है तो पानी की अपनी वेव्स होंगी तो कैसा दिखाई देगा एज इफ मून का रिफ्लेक्शन ऐसे दिखाई देगा एज इफ इट इज शिवरिंग एज इफ इट इज 
quivering so this is the imagination this is the beauty of imagination of these pre romantic poets which was later inherited by the romantic poets एंड फॉरेस्ट में कैसे दिखाई देगा जो पेड़ थोड़े बहुत हिल रहे होंगे मून होगा तो कभी लाइट कभी नहीं लाइट ऐसे क्विवरिंग मून दिखाई देगा द होल एयर वाइटन विद द बाउंडलेस टाइड ऑफ सिल्वर रेडियंस ट्रेम्बलिंग राउंड द वर्ल्ड बट वेन हाफ ब्लॉटेड फ्रॉम द स्काई हर लाइट दैट इज इट आई थिंक ऑफ सिल्वर रेडियंस ट्रेम्बलिंग राउंड द वर्ल्ड द होल एयर वाइट सब और व्याप्त है वो सिल्वर रेडियंस किसका मून का एंड इट इज ट्रेम्बलिंग राउंड द वर्ल्ड एज अ ब्लेसिंग एंड 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 वी लव द साइट सो वेर हैज द पोएट बिगिन विथ द पोएट हैज बिगिन विद द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ इवनिंग एंड द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ सनसेट एंड ही Uh, ends with the description and this section th that is this extract ends with the section where uh, the uh, moon is at its best the moon is all around affecting the world affecting all of us so so you see all the major themes of pre romantic poetry come into these two extracts very clearly very uh, Uh, very vocally and the poet has been able to uh, bring out these elements in very simple language you see the use of blank verse all through just look up uh, what's the what's the difference of blank verse and rhyme in your text see when i read the poem you found that i was not stopping at two lines or four lines and i was continuing full stops were there where the poet chose them to be that is romantic that is the taste of romantic poetry that is the first precursor of romantic poets of the questions that you have on uh, these precursors you have to know a bit about um, the author and the details of the text that is these two extracts are part of the larger text and the exact subject matter of the two extracts and then of course the whole paraphrase as i told you and of course underline all the images and then see how the poet has used all these images you will have questions and answers also you have short answer questions short answer questions describe the double noise describe the human elements used by the poet describe uh, the effect of the fierce rage of winter on uh, water on land and on the sky and uh, how has the poet described the uh evening of autumn season and how has he described the moon thank you